In this video, we're going to take a look at a box of Skeleton Warriors by Wargames Atlantic. This box contains 32 hard plastic miniatures, and we're going to build them up and take a closer look. My name is Jay, and you're watching Must Contain Minis. I do reviews and showcases of miniatures and miniature related products. Now let's get into it. Special thanks goes to Wargames Atlantic for sending me this product for review. The current pricing on these models is $34.95 American dollars per box. As per normal with Wargames Atlantic, the back of the box describes the product and shows you some pictures of some completed models. They don't necessarily show you what's in there, but don't worry, I have lots of high quality pictures in this review. In the box you'll find 8 plastic frames with 4 models each. There are no bases to talk about here whatsoever. That's alright, you're going to have to figure out your own bases for your own games. Okay, let's see what's on this frame. If you want to take a longer look, you can pause the video now. The three miniatures on the bottom that I just circled go together so easy. They are quick, they have everything put together, they are fairly nice to work with. The one that I circled now, that one's more difficult. You'll need a higher skill set to build that one. I had a couple of difficulties with it, but I also got some that look great. We'll show you later in the review. When I built these miniatures, I was thinking of Oathmark, but you can really use them for any gaming system. I built them as 5 archers, 10 spearmen that look like they're throwing their spears, 10 spearmen who are thrusting, 5 skeleton warriors, 1 skeleton champion, and 1 undead necromancer. So I'm going to show you all of those throughout this slideshow today. These are my 5 skeleton archers. You may recognize this lamp from my Gamecraft Miniatures video that you can find here. Now underneath it are the warriors, the skeleton warriors that I built with this box. These skeleton warriors look great. I'm going to show you these up close and after that we're going to move on to the more difficult to build ones. That's them. Those are the hardest 8 miniatures in this kit to build. From the frame you have to figure out how to attach those two legs and this torso all together and put that on the base that you want. Once you do that you can put on your weapons as per normal. For me these 8 miniatures were a bit of a struggle. I believe novices are going to have a hard time with it. People who are intermediate or above they'll do okay. I tried two different methods here. I have one that I just tried gluing together and putting it on the paper towel work surface I was working with. And the other one I actually glued to the base with all the components together and then I propped it upright with two bases and let it dry. The one that I laid on the paper towel did not have great results. You'll see it when we go through the pictures of these miniatures completed. The one that is uh, being propped up by the bases did okay. I got my best results when I paired patients with a citadel assembly handle. Gathered here are all eight of my skeleton warriors that don't have the integrated bases. The advantage of these is that you have a greater diversity with how you can assemble the model. The disadvantage is that it takes a little bit of a higher degree of building skill to make these ones. Oathmark, the game that I plan to use these miniatures in, actually goes with units divisible by 5. So you can have units of 5, 10, 15, 20. Because it goes in units of 5 instead of 8, I assembled two of the integrated base miniatures to go with this group. When you assemble the separated legs and torso together in a pleasing manner, you get a really appealing miniature. When you don't do it quite right, you get some really interesting results. This leaning back skeleton is the one that I made 
using just the paper towel. I didn't use any supports when I built it and you can tell he's really leaning back and I have to use the spear as an extra support to keep him up. This one I hunched over forward to counterbalance the one that I had leaning back too far. I did this on purpose. I figured I might as well make them kind of funny and make them shambling undead. This guy turned out okay. Again for this one I had to use the spear as a support to keep it standing upright. This one actually ended up looking mildly inappropriate. At the same time it makes for a unique and interesting model. After that last one I thought, you know what, why don't I just make one sitting down because I'm tired of fiddling with these. After I built this one I had just one more of these skeletons to build and I thought, you know what, I'm tired of building these, I don't want to deal with their legs right now. So I decided, let's chop them off and make them like one of the mantic skeletons coming out of the ground. The approach of cutting the miniature down worked out pretty well. I had to use a little bit of extra glue to get them on the base because the torso wasn't 100% straight where I cut it. And I decided, you know what, for some visual appeal, I'm going to make it so that one of his arms is not yet attached. Maybe he's coming out of the grave or he's picking up his body parts or he's still going after someone chopped him down. Finally, I finished the miniatures with the detached body and legs. The integrated bases went together so much quicker and I breathed a sigh of relief when I got it back to them. Next up, a second unit of 10 spearmen. This time I gave them better shields. We just looked at 30 of the skeleton warriors. But wait a minute, there are actually 32 miniatures in this box set. So what did I do with the last two? Well, I made an undead champion, which I armed with a sword and a bow. And I made this really cool model that I'm going to use as a necromancer. Just as easily, this miniature could be used as a standard bearer. Here's my completed army. Now with every review I like to show you what you get with the product so you know what to expect. I don't grade the products that come in. I don't say this is a 5 star or 2 star or anything like that because what I find as a positive other people find as a negative and vice versa. Now what we got within this grouping here is I built two units of 10 spearmen, a 5 skeleton warrior set and a five skeleton archer set. On top of that I also managed to get out a skeleton champion and an undead necromancer. Overall this is a great miniature set. It is value priced and packs high quality crisp miniatures that are mostly easy to build. You can see the quality in the frames. That said that is where my criticism comes in too. This kit comes with one pike, one sword, one bow. This means that if you are buying to build an army, you're going to need to buy three of these boxes to get 20 figures armed with those weapons. The spears though are very plentiful in this box. You can make up 24 spearmen per box based off of three spears per sprue. Finally, this torso is of a higher skill level than the rest of the model kit.
I'm guessing they left that torso in this kit to make it so you can have one skeleton per group of four that's in a more dynamic pose. Now this dynamic pose is based on your skill as a modeler. If you get it right, you get something that looks nice like this. And if you don't get it perfect, you'll end up with a model like this. Now that's not the end of the world. It looks decent enough. You just have to say to your opponent, yeah, they're shambling skeletons. They are what they are. With all of that out of the way, it is now time to do our scale comparison image. So going left to right, we have a 32mm Reaper miniature, a Wargames Atlantic figure, a DGS Games figure, that's 32mm, another skeleton from Wargames Atlantic, a Frostgrave miniature, followed by another Wargames Atlantic uh, figure, and then another Frostgrave, and finally an Oathmark figure at the far end. Now the Frostgrave and Oathmark figures are scaled to quote unquote 28mm, but I find that they are on the smaller side of figures for 28mm, so they fit in with a lot of historical figures rather than something like GW. So based on the fact that these guys are kind of close to the 32mm, I have a feeling that they would fit in with the GW style figures, but unfortunately I have to buy more of those because I don't have anything for scale comparison. So what do you think of these models? Have you tried anything by Wargames Atlantic yet? If you have, or if you have any thoughts that you want to share, please tell us in the comments below. Thank you for joining me in this review of Wargames Atlantic Skeleton Warriors. Until next time, happy gaming everyone!